Honorable Speaker of the House and uh, Honorable Parliamentarians and distinguished um, participants. Um, I stand here as announced, but not really representing the office of the senior advisor to the president of the UN General Assembly. I stand here because we had had prior discussions and because they left last night. I just thought I would speak to his paper. Um, however, I, I want to start by speaking to the reason why and engage with the parliamentarians, engage with the ECOWAS community. Firstly, I'd like to really thank ECOWAS Parliament and the speakers to indeed express the deep appreciation that we as the organizers have for having you know, decided committedly to partner with us. That you have exposed the ECOWAS community to advocates for the rights of older persons is that you have taken us a notch higher and increased our community of advocates and increase the level of activities. And indeed, you have opened up the sub-region to us to talk about issues of older persons. And because indeed, we do know that the power to legislate lie in your hand. And the influence lie also both in your heart, in your words, and in your, in your activities. We really know that indeed, we can go much further than we could have gone without you. So thank you very much. Now, I would like to start by giving a background to the fact that the ECOWAS parliament, as we all know, um, is known as the community parliament. And we do know that you, you have 115 seats and that each country, each of the 15 countries has a minimum of five seats, as a guaranteed five seats and then other seats are located according to population. We do note that, uh, Nigerian, um, that Nigeria has 35 seats, and that's the most. And we also do know that, indeed, um, the plenary, this plenary is the highest body of the parliament, and its decisions are binding. And we also do know that you have you work in advisory capacity to ECOWAS itself and that all the members here, all the member states here are integrated in the African Union. So to talk to ECOWAS parliamentarians is to talk to national assemblies of 15 countries and the communities they represent in 15 countries. And also to talk and have a window into the African Union. So this is very important to us. We want to say that the goal of being here this morning is that stakeholders want to engage in the plenary in order to build consensus among the parliamentarians and the member states that they represent, which is very necessary to strengthen the protection of the rights of older persons in the region. We want to say that the reason that we are here is to discuss with you, share information. Yesterday we had the opportunity to hear about the situation. And we all have a common position on the situation. Africa has had a common position on the situation. But when we look at the um, AU, framework, uh, AU policy framework and plan of action 20, 2002, which is under review now, and then we look at the African common position of 2012, uh, taken by all the member states supporting the UN Convention, and we look at even the common position that produced the, the, the protocol to the charter, on the people's and human and the human people's rights, on the rights of older persons. So we are not in doubt that ECOWAS, African Union, and all the member states in Africa have taken a common position to strengthen the protection of the rights of older persons. So we are not here to persuade you that you did not do something about it. We are here to say that we are thankful that indeed there are already documents in our hand, positions that we have taken, 
But we are here to say that there is more that we need to build consensus on to get done. And that the power to do that lie in the hands of the parliamentarians here. So that is one reason. The next reason we are here is now to mobilize comprehensive support now across Africa, that Africa will now move as a block in the pursuit of the UN Convention on the Rights of Older Persons. And we are here to see perhaps there are some substantive information that during the debate you would like to get from us as to how this can advise or inform the progress that you may need to make to be indeed be part of the UN open-ended working group. So we are here to dialogue, to engage, to answer questions and to provide information. Having said that, I, I would like to now state, perhaps this is also what um, um, Mr. Alexander Temit would have said because we watched his video yesterday representing Nigeria. at the 10th session of the UN Open and Day Working Group, and indeed speaking very passionately and powerfully about the position that Nigeria in the leadership. But you see, the argument that we give, the persuasion that we give, all the persons do not have to go to these different baskets. And in the creation of the different UN conventions assigned and at, you know, for the sake of these varying groups, the rights of the child, the women, and then persons with disability. It is specific to whom the document is addressed to. And if you look at all the documents that are in existence, there is not one document that specifically deals with the uniqueness of old age. There is no one document that specifically speaks to the experiences of this population cohort. And then they will tell you, after all, you have the Madrid International Plan of Action, that that is one document that was dedicated to older persons. So why don't you just live with the Madrid International Plan of Action? And the argument that we put forth is that the Madrid International Plan of Action is a soft law. It's not binding on anybody. The Madrid International Plan of Action is a recommendation. Should any government desire to upgrade, to influence, or to be informed about how a national policy should be structured, you go to the Madrid International Plan of Action. You look at the recommendations and you draw up your strategic implementation plans. But you cannot take the Madrid International Plan of Action. It's not just able. You can't go to court on the basis of the Madrid International Plan of Action. So that's a soft law. So any other document that you see, international document that you see, 
there is not one that addresses the rights of older persons. And a UN document, just like we have the protocol, should we ratify the protocol? We need 15 members to ratify the protocol, and it comes into existence. Then it will be binding on African member states. Then African member states will have to be accountable for what they ratified. Then African member states will be compelled to domesticate the clauses in the document. And in domesticating the clauses in the document, for it to take effect, they will be compelled to bring the infrastructure, the architecture that is going to express and cause implementation. And they also, most importantly, will be compelled to mobilize the funding. The budget will now come out because it becomes now integrated in the development plan. So that is what I want to say today and to share today that the stakeholder group on aging Africa, the National Human Rights uh, Commission in Nigeria, at the 10th session of the open-ended working group, strongly expressed you know, support for Nigeria's position. And we made a commitment, the stakeholder group on aging Africa and the National Human Rights Commission, there in New York, made a commitment that we were going to start creating awareness across Africa that what we saw at the 10th, open, 10th session of the open-ended working group cannot be the last. So that is why we are here, to please ask that you, you bear with us and ask any question you need to ask, and we will be here to answer you, even including the structuring of the open-ended working group, how it works, and the substantive inputs that you as parliamentarians can bring to it. Thank you very much. Thank you.